Colleagues, tonight we are at the sixth and final hustings here in the Mansion House, and I'd like to thank everyone for turning out tonight. As it is our last hustings, I'd like to thank each of uh, the five candidates for the manner in which all of these debates have been conducted. I also would like to thank the chair of the party who has done a fantastic job in chairing these events, and it hasn't always been easy, uh, as I'm sure you'll find out in a few minutes, uh, as well as the party staff for their work over the last number of weeks. I ask you, colleagues, what other party could be as transparent as we are? We've had public hustings in front of the media, open questioning, and streamed live over the internet. Could you imagine any other political party on this island doing business in this way? And that is a credit to our party. <laughs> Colleagues, it is time to address the future of our party, the Labour Party, the party which I was born into and is in my very DNA. I've served the party all my life as chair of Labour Youth and other various different national committees as well. I lived in Dublin for nine years while working for Board Falcha and Falcha Ireland, and I've campaigned and been a member across multiple constituencies in Dublin. Dublin South to commence, then Dublin South East, Dublin Midwest, and Dublin South Central. And this is long before I became a Senator, MEP, RTD, and Minister. What motivated me to be active in Labour politics is equality. I've always believed that money should not be the medium by which access to education and healthcare is decided. I still believe that to this day. I'm proud of our party. I'm proud of our achievements in government. I think it's critically important that we retain ownership of those achievements and do not allow Fine Gael to try and take them. In my own ministry, I am proud that we have maintained industrial peace in CIE and that we will have a proper cross-city Lewis line up and running in a few years. I'm also proud that I finally launched the Leap Card, Dublin's integrated transport ticket, after Fianna Fáil were unable to do so for 10 years. I'm also proud that we're turning Dublin into one of Europe's top cycling cities with the cooperation of so many good Labour councillors. I'm proud that we ensured this, city, this, this country exited the bailout and didn't end up in a second one. Proud that the budgetary adjustments have been 1.4 to 1 in spending cuts versus taxation measures, despite the desire of Fine Gael for it to be 3 to 1. Proud that we've protected social welfare rates and wages. Proud that 75,000 more people are at work and that unemployment is at its lowest in five years. Proud that we will have a marriage equality referendum next year. However, colleagues, that is the past. It is over, and we now need to concentrate on the future. And there is no point in going around and saying it would be much worse if Labour were not in government. It doesn't matter, and quite frankly, people don't care. They are more worried about what's in their pocket at the end of the week, and the recent election results have proved that. Politics is a human endeavor, and because it is, we make mistakes, and we in the Labour Party have made mistakes. Because of those mistakes, we have lost many fine councillors, many fine candidates, and some of them sit here amongst us tonight. These are my colleagues, indeed, they're my friends, and it makes me very angry that they were left in this way. When I think of mistakes, I think of the handling of the water metering, the scandalous way in which the medical card review was uh, dealt with, and the way in which we managed multiple Fine Gael ministerial controversies. Colleagues, there is a difference between being successful in government and being successful in politics. We have been successful in government. We have not been successful in politics. Perception in politics is important, and there is a discourse, a very conversation out there about the Labour Party at the moment that is not just damaging, it threatens our very future, and we need to collectively fight against it. The word that is on everyone's lips at the moment is austerity. We have possibly around 21 months to change that discourse to prosperity. And top of my agenda is to deliver for working families, working people, and those out there actively looking for work. <laughs> Colleagues, our party, the Labour Party, has to put a premium on work and for those who get up in the morning and go out and do a decent day's work for a decent wage. Support and education is at the core of the Labour Party, and we need to deliver on fair access to education for all. I know how important that is. I am a product of the decision of Neve Brannock to bring in free third level education in the 1990s. For workers, we need to ensure that our commitments on collective bargaining will be seen through. And from an ethics point of view, this government must once and for all ensure that anyone who is in receipt of public monies can be and will be held to account. Politically, we need to take our fight to our political opponents, and I know for sure we're up to it. These people are against everything and for nothing. We have to reposition ourselves with our colleagues in government. 
Put simply, if I am deputy leader, every major decision will be labour-proofed or it simply will not happen. We must combine this with activism. We must reorganise the party. We are at our strongest when we work together, colleagues. We do need a fresh start, and it will be a huge task. And some say it will be an impossible task. Well, colleagues, I've heard all that before. I was told in 2009 it would be an impossible task for me to become an MEP. And guess what? Working together, we delivered on that. And it is my absolute intention that we run in the next general election as an independent party with a policy platform based on decisions made at a non-choreographed party conference beforehand. Colleagues, I ask you, I ask you sincerely, if you want a person who will stand up for you against the cold face, if you want someone who will keep his eye on the ball and always protect labour interests, then please do trust me with your vote. I am passionate about the Labour Party, but most of all, I am a person of conviction. Okay. Colleagues, what I, say is, what I say is what I believe in, and trust me, what I believe in is what I do. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. I'll ask now Michael McCarthy to take to the floor.